Hello and welcome back to 4FS Gaming. Update 1.3 has been out on PC for a while now, and the changes to compact ammo did make certain weapons more powerful, but as I play more and more and look at Crytek's weapon usage stats, it becomes clear that the long ammo meta is still going strong. But which is the best long ammo rifle? The Lamelle and the Mosin the Gant are certainly both very strong, but does one rise above the other to take the crown as the king of rifles in Hunt? Before I started making this video, I would have honestly said no. I thought they were so similar that it simply comes down to personal preference. But then I looked deeply, and I mean really, really deeply, at everything about both of these weapons. Price, availability, damage, muzzle velocity, the sights, the reload, ammo pickups and reserves, fire rate, and I can safely say that there is a winner. And one of these rifles performs significantly better than the other overall. So let's get stuck in. Now first we have price and availability. The Labelle unlocks at rank 52 and costs $397. The Mosin unlocks at a whole 20 ranks later at 72 and it costs $490. The Labelle is cheaper, which matters to some people, but it isn't really a factor that concerns me when trying to determine the highest performance weapon. Then we have damage. In the store description we can see that the Labelle does 132 damage to the chest at 10 meters range, while the Mosin does 136, which is only 4 more. Now that's minor, right? You've got to go a lot deeper than store statistics to discover how these weapons really function. Thankfully, due to this table which the devs gave us to show hit zone damage multipliers, and this graph which shows ammo damage fall off over range, I'm able to play around with lots and lots of numbers in Excel and derive the Mosin the Gantz damage curve, with damage on the y-axis and range in meters on the x-axis. I can then split this graph to show the damage for different hit zones like this. And because the headshot will always kill until 250 meters range, we can ignore that to better see the other hit zones in this graph. But why does any of this matter? Well, we can now calculate the range it takes for any combination of non-headshots to kill. Two shots to the upper chest, well, that'll work out to 150 meters, two shots to the arms, well then you're gonna need to be at a 59 meter range to kill. Two shots to the legs, that's never gonna kill a full health hunter, so you better aim somewhere else. We can do the same for the Labelle, and without a direct comparison, it seems to be more or less the same than the Mosin. We can ignore headshots here as well, because just like the Mosin, it will do the job up to 250 meters, but even looking at the other body hit zones, the damage curve looks very, very similar. This makes a lot of sense, because both use the same curve. The only difference is that the Labelle has slightly lower base damage. Side by side, we can see how that difference diminishes over range, as the further away you are, the bigger the range modifier impacts your damage, and the less your base damage matters at all. So what does it all mean? Let's translate this into real terms. This is the range at which two arm shots will no longer kill. 55 meters for the Labelle, and 59 meters for the Mosin. Then we have the range at which two body shots will no longer kill, 139 meters for the Labelle and 150 meters for the Mosin. The math shows us simply how for every combination of shots, the Mosin allows you to be lethal at around 4 to 10 meters further away. Does this matter? Well, not all of the time, but there will be instances where you miss out on kills because you used a Labelle instead of a Mosin. So I think this is certainly a significant enough damage difference to take into account, even if it is small on initial inspection. The Mosin wins this round, but it's certainly not a deal breaker for the Labelle at all. I'm saving the deal breaker for last, and it's a doozy. But what about bullet velocity? Well, the Labelle fires its shot at 630 meters per second, while the Mosin clocks in at a slower 615 meters per second. So the Labelle wins, right? That's a point for the Labelle? Well, not so fast, excuse the pun. Let's look at what 15 meters per second actually means. If I shoot a target at 50 meters away, then it will take 1.9 milliseconds. That's under two thousandths of a second longer for my bullet to hit with a Mosin than a Labelle. At 100 meters, it goes up to 3.9 milliseconds faster. And at 200 meters, the Labelle bullet hits 7.7 .7 milliseconds before a Mosin bullet would hit a target. To put that into perspective, the difference is a fraction of a frame even at 200 meters away. It is so tiny, insignificant, and meaningless that anyone who tells you the Labelle is better due to muzzle velocity, which is something even last week that I would have said unironically, well, they're just getting caught up in the placebo effect. And even if the difference was significant, you can play around this by leading your target more. But don't do that, you should lead your targets the same amount for both guns, 
because the difference is less than a frame even if you're running this game on a NASA computer. So with that topic dead and buried, let's talk a bit about fire rate. The store page says it's identical, at 34 rounds per minute if you ignore reload. However, there has been a long-held perception amongst some in the hunt community that in truth, the Mosin fires faster due to a faster bolting speed. So let's test it. How long does it take for both guns to shoot five bullets? Well, we can see the results there, and uh, this one actually surprised me because I thought the whole fire rate bonus thing on the Mosin was a bit of a myth. It surprised me so much that I had to test it twice to be sure. And it turns out that the Mosin does fire very slightly faster. It's hardly noticeable, but in split second fights, this is a more snappy weapon and it will land that second shot before the label does. So this round, which I thought would be a clear tie, does go to the Mosin. Let's talk about the sights. Now sights are primarily a matter of personal preference, so nothing I say here can overwrite your feelings when it comes to what sight you perform best with. However, what I can do is measure which weapon obscures more of your view when aiming, as a clear field of view is very important in Hunt Showdown. Here is what blocks your view when you aim down sights with the label. And here is the Mosin. Now let's play them back and forth. The difference is very minor, the Mosin is more chunky, but the label has a massive bolt handle sticking out the side. As for the sights themselves, I prefer the Mosin sights, but I cannot see a way to objectively determine why I like those sights better, so I'm going to declare a draw for this category. As expected, sights are a matter of personal preference. Let's move on to what is probably one of the most obvious, but also important differences between the two weapons. The Labelle takes a long time to reload, to the tune of 1.8 seconds per bullet. This is excruciatingly slow compared to the Mosin, which takes only around one second to reload an individual bullet. The Mosin also has a speed loader, which can ready an entire magazine of five rounds in under three seconds. The Mosin wins here, hands down, no competition at all. As long as you have ammo reserves, the Mosin can be ready to fire very quickly. The Labelle, on the other hand, requires time away from the fight to stock back up. Of course, many people will claim that this doesn't matter that much because the Labelle does have 10 rounds in the magazine, which is double the Mosin, so you don't have to reload as often. Now, I would say this is not really that important. Although nice, you will rarely need more than five long rounds in one sitting, at least before you have a short break in cover to reload, and the Mosin speed loader is so quick that it hardly takes you away from the action at all. You also have to remember that both weapons will lose a loaded round on reload without the bullet grubber trait, and this is worse for the Labelle, as you have to empty all 10 rounds to reload without waste, while the Mosin you can speed load after only 5 rounds, and you're good to go. But what is the doozy, the deal breaker? Most of what we have discovered so far puts the Mosin in front, but not by much. No, there is something else, something that really puts the Labelle in a lower category of performance. And it is the reserve ammo. Now what, what's that you say? That doesn't matter. Because even though the Labelle only has 5 ammo reserves, and the Mosin has 10, it all evens out in the end, because they both have the same number of bullets, 15 in total. Well actually, it really does matter. Because the amount of ammo you gain from ammo boxes and crates is determined by your maximum potential reserve ammunition for your loadout not your total ammunition. This is why when you take two weapons of the same ammo type, you get more bullets from ammo pickups. What does this look like in action? Well, I opened over 40 ammo crates with a Mosin and over 40 ammo crates with a Labelle, and this is what I discovered. With a Mosin, you have a 90% chance of getting three long ammo back from a crate, and a 10% chance of retrieving only two long ammo. Every time you open a yellow long ammo pack, you will gain two bullets. With the Labelle, a crate will grant you 90% chance of retrieving two long ammo and a 10% chance of only one bullet. The yellow ammo packs will only ever grant you one bullet. This is bad for the Labelle. It is a real, measurable area in which performance is significantly worse than the Mosin. Not just by a couple of percentage points, like in damage or fire rate, but a massive, almost 50% reduction in your ability to restock on ammunition. You can overcome this problem somewhat by pairing with an uppercut, but the Mosin can also do that and then it's swimming in long ammo with every single pickup. So let's do a quick recap overall. The Mosin is more expensive and unlocks later. 
The Mosin does more damage, it is a small difference, but it's not completely insignificant. The Labelle has a higher muzzle velocity, however this has no measurable impact on performance. Surprisingly, the Mosin has a higher fire rate, but only by a marginal degree. Those sights are similar in bulk, meaning that personal preference is the deciding factor. The Mosin is able to reload much faster than the Labelle, which more than offsets the lower magazine size. The Mosin can get much more ammo from crates and boxes. Both weapons have a melee and a scoped variant which ultimately will be preferred differently based on playstyle. To me, the verdict is clear. The Mosin Nagant is the better gun. It is high performance and has so many advantages, I really cannot place them in the same box anymore. Now the Labelle is still a great weapon. It's a long ammo rifle and it's one of the top weapons in Hunt. But sorry Labelle lovers, the data is clear and the Mosin is better. This doesn't mean you should drop the Labelle and never touch it again. Of course the best weapon in Hunt is the one that you get headshots with, and sometimes a weapon will just click with you. If it's not the Mosin, that's okay. But if you were a person that was wondering which of these two performs better, then you have your very clear answer from me. Thank you for watching, please consider subscribing, checking out our Discord and Patreon, or coming over to our Twitch streams and hanging out, and they are all linked in the description below. This is Ascendance from 4FS Gaming, signing off.